you back. How are you?
with so many studios and such beautiful facilities. Our Summer Leadership Institute culminating performance 
is our sharing with you of the learning that we've been in in these past eight days. It's a 10 day, tomorrow will be our 10th day. We come together on day one, we don't know each other. We come together as a group of people, maybe some of us know one another, but as a community of about 100, we don't know each other. And we go through a process of uh, movement and learning that includes Urban Bush Women's Dance for Everybody, our entering, building, and exiting community workshop, where we look at the values around what does it mean to work in community, to live, and to, um, uh, and what do you leave? Then we have a workshop called Understanding and Undoing Racism. And we have that for three days, where we do a deep dive looking at um, how racism shows up in our arts communities, in our organizing, in uh, the way we address one another, in our work. And we do that through looking at two, uh, it's a three-day process, but we look at internalized racial oppression, internalized racial inferiority for black folks and people of color, internalized racial superiority for white folks. And we look at that, how those power dynamics show up in our work in our organizing. And then from there, I think it's on about day, we, 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 on day five, we go into our process of asset mapping. And that's where we look at what we have in the room, the people, the skills that are in the room, and we create from that. So it is what they bring into the room that we create from. What you will see has been created from the assets that are in the room. Um, we ask people to bring their stories, um, their whole selves to the process. And then this becomes the way that we put the learning of the last few days of the Summer Leadership Institute, the, the previous days, into our bodies. We put that learning into our art making, into our bodies, into our songs. So it's a special thing for us to be able to share uh, that art making and share the process with you. So. Thank you very much for being here, and here we go. Crossroads. In this world of possibilities, of choice, of knowing, where three 
become one, where past, present, and future meet, where everyone must make a decision. As a child, as an old man, as an old woman, as the trickster. We stand at the crossroads of the human and the divine. We are the messengers mediating our existence while we resolve within ourselves, our heavens, our hells, our hiddens, our dreams, our heavens, our hells, our hiddens, our dreams.
party people from all around.
always had art supplies. So she had scissors, she had color pencils, she had color paper and crayons. So it was, it was lit. It was a good time. It was a good time. And I was always so attentive in her class because art was my favorite subject. And I used to sit right in front of this girl, Shannon E. Mill. Shannon E. Mill. Mm, let me tell you what Shannon did. So I'm sitting in class, real attentive, because I'm a good student. And you know what Shannon did? She cut one of my locks off. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. I tried to kill her with some safety scissors, but <laughs> to my defense, when my hair dropped on that floor, I feel like I really did lose a part of me. And the crazy thing is she looked just like me. Just like you? Just like me. And so I was rebellious, and I stopped cutting my hair, stopped getting trends, and I let my locks grow. They were down in my butt, I was swinging them. All the boys started looking at me. <laughs> and then I cut all my hair off. And everybody was like, you tripping. You going through a midlife crisis. I was like, no, I just cut my hair. Because it's mine, and I do what I want. was our dance class, okay? So what she used to do is take out the broom, put it right in front of us, and guess what song she used to put on? Uh-uh, movimiento sexy, that's eso! Alrighty, so we used to put the broom and used to go suavecito para abajo, para abajo, para abajo, and, you know. Well, so at my mom's house, or as my nieces call it, la casa de abuelita, when we're in the kitchen, cooking or cleaning, whatever we're doing, we're always teaching them how to dance. And we always tell them, Mueve los pompis, mueve los pompis, mueve los pompis, mueve los pompis. himself. He spoke in a southern, certified dialect. I'm going to share a few of his phrases with you all, okay? All right, here we go. It's about four day in the morning. I don't put no yeast in what I tell you. You'll know directly this system here ain't worth a nickel. So whatsoever you do, don't be no educated fool, cause you'll crack up like homebred. Did I say y'all come on in? Come on in, we got plenty of room. Cause you can always sleep on the floor and cover with the dough and he laughed. When 
When I was growing up, my mom used to sing me a song every morning to get me up out of bed. That song was Rise and Shine and Give God the Glory, Glory. And at the end of the day, my Greek grandmother says a Greek word that means I'm tired. I'll say it and then we can say it together. Eskasa. Eskasa. My family is Jewish. They, my great grandparents came here from the Ukraine. And while we've lost a lot of our culture over generations, there's one thing that all Jews in America know how to do, and that's the Hora! Yiddish phrase that I learned in context. I learned when I was very young and I was low to the ground. And my grandfather, who was this big, rotund man, would chase me around and say, I'm going to give you a patch in the tuchis. but they were going to be there. And you might hear this song. Oh, Lil' Liza James. acquisitions, annexes, displacement of brown and indigenous people. What does patriotism look like when the state sanctions violence against you, your family, your ancestors? Change, change, change. Can't quite name the change. Losing the spirit of aloha. And you know how the young people say good morning when they see their elders? Home. Home. I just want to go home. Y'all, I don't even recognize my neighborhood anymore. I remember the little house over there, that yellow house. That was Mrs. Jones's house. Yeah. What about the candy lady? She had Chico sticks. She had a Jolly Ranch. Lemon heads. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What about the summertime when the icy lady would be out on the stoop and have her stuff lined up? She had the colors red, blue, yellow, green, <laughs> all the colors. But no flavors. <laughs> But what about Nosy no Old Miss Penny? This lady be in the windows looking through the blinds. She didn't even know that we business before we knew the business. But what about Keakua? Our ancestors. 
can't forget the medicine woman. You know, you can go to her for some money, healing, and a man. Or a woman. What about me? What about us? Where will we go? Home. Home. I, I just, just want to go, go home. home. But we cannot afford to go back home. Where will all the brown people live? Living in the memories of my abuelitas, arroz con plátano, rice with bananas. The only part I get right is the bananas, except when they're green. My rice is always smushy. Living in the memories of the colonia parties, the whole block, a party. This house is not a home. Where's the constant influx of people running, singing, yelling, dancing? That coffee shop, that's not a home. Where's my mother's wake up call? Baja desayunar. Speak the colonizer's language. Twice colonized, twice removed. We cannot afford to not go home. How will all the brown people live? My great-great-grandparents on my mother's side kept enslaved people in their estate in Maryland. I once saw where they lived, the slave quarters. I just remember my grandma being very proud of the architecture. Um, my great-grandfather on my father's side, he went to his deathbed without ever telling anyone where my Jewish family immigrated from. He was protecting my whiteness so I could never follow my tracks back. There is no consequence, no risk in my white vacuum. I could literally break a window on purpose and people would be like, are you okay? Was it an accident? This isn't an accident. I'm not an accident. To tarry with whiteness. To hold, to be with something long past comfort. This discomfort, this is the medicine. Negroes, do I have all my Negroes in this space? We're ready to get started. Yes? Yes? Everyone ready? Great. Awesome. Uh, just quiet down. Um, we're about to bring you in to meet our team. Um, so you can come on in. There'll be a few words from everyone on the team, and then we'll get started. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. We're super excited that you're here to audition for this adaptation of James Baldwin's I Am Not Your Negro, which we are bringing to the great white way. And, um, you know, we just thought it was important for you to meet the production team because this is a very different show. And so I'll start by introducing myself. I'm Harriet Chusung. I'm the head writer. And then over here we have our dramaturg, Miss Vanessa Threadgill um, Hopkins Hughes. And then we have our um, Negro specialist, Ms. Olabenta Jackson. And none of this would be possible without our incredible director and producer, Stephen. Um, Stephen, could you just say a few words? Hi, thank you so much for coming to see me today. After seeing the James Bond movie, I was just... Yes, yeah, whatever. The James Baldwin movie, I was just so struck and knew that I needed to tell his story. We've received numerous grants, residencies, and we're going to be touring all around the world, and if you're just right, you could be our Negro. Thank you. And so um, to help you in your preparation process, I think our, um, our Negro specialist and dramaturg would like to tell you a little bit about the character. Hi. What we'd like you to consider while you prepare is that we would like our Negro to be classic, but contemporary. Our Negro needs to have gravatis and humor. Our Negro needs to be profound, yet accessible. And of course, our Negro needs to be urban and suburban. <laughs> and we'd love for our Negro to be universal, yet unique and appealing yet off-putting. Hmm? Exactly. Yes? Exactly. 
All right, everyone, so you should have your sides, the Baldwin quote, so you can go outside again, and we'll call you in one by one. in high school, but my school was white, Mr. Baldwin, prestigious white. And later, I realized that I was the token black to go with all those coins. I asked myself the same question you asked. Why? Why me? Why us? The chosen ones, the white man's Cinderella, the social scapegoats, the reliable guinea pigs. We're a reminder of power, a measure of progress, and that is the secret to selling the Negro. Quotes from Mr. Baldwin. There are days when you wonder what your role in this country and your future is in it. I'm terrified of the moral apathy at the death of the heart that is happening in my country. It's a terrible thing for an entire people to surrender to the notion that one ninth of its population is beneath them. And until that moment, until the moment comes when we, the American people, are able to accept the fact that I have to accept, for example, that my ancestors are both white and black. That on this continent, where we are trying to forge a new identity for which we need each other, and that I am not a ward of America. 
I'm not an object of missionary charity. I am one of the people who built this country. Until this moment, there's a scarcity of hope for the American dream because the people who are denied participation in it by their very presence will wreck it. Trauma. Trauma. I hate to say I was born with this trauma, this weight, this fear, this anger. Or maybe it's not anger, more like sadness. This internalized racial oppression, marginalization, depression that has been passed down. This need to be comforted, to be loved on. This touch, that connection between a baby relying on, reaching for her mother's breast. I knew she'd comfort me. I knew she'd comfort me. My Arishas would heal me, guide me. But what am I missing? What am I missing? Sit. Sit. Sit in it. Sit. They say sit in it, but I'm tired of sitting. I have been sitting. Move. Move, movement, move. Movement, move. You know, this traditional practice of movement, this traditional practice of medicine, conjuring up medicines embedded within this cell, this body, this body we come to call you. Me. We. We are the healers. It's time we take our bodies back.
and we're back and we're ready for our next Negro. So is someone ready? Is someone out there? Yes. yes. Great. Thank you. Come right on in. You're prepared? Yes. Great. Um, I've written my own piece, so uh, trait. I'm everything and everywhere, and everything and everywhere is in me. My messy bed, my tired eyes, my unnerving yet quiet pets, my loquacious friends, my erratic siblings, my neurotic parents, my joyful relatives, the people that I meet along my journey, the wild sea wind, the compacting rain. Yeah, we're going to just um, give you some, you know, some material to work with. We're going to just give you some prompts and things, okay. Uh, actually, yeah. Oh. Um, you know, it would be great if you could just like, grab your groin, you know, like a mm, kind of thing. That would be great. Yeah. Okay, and if you could also be a little bit more black, okay? A little bit edgier, edgier. And, and I brought this just for this case. Um, could you put on this hoodie? Put on the hood, please. Thank you. Yeah, it's perfect. Thank you. I'm black, light skin, and tall, but I am more than a mere physical representation. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Do you want this back? Yes, yes. Next. Next one. Are you prepared? Yeah. Oh, is he a little young? I, I don't know. Do you think he's a little young? I don't know. Let's ask Steven. Is he a little young for the role? I, I think we can audition him as an adult. Okay. Okay, ready? Okay. People are trapped in history, and history is trapped in them.
you do use my <laughs> All right, everyone, home stretch. We've seen a lot of Negroes today. We've got just a few more. We're ready for our next Negro. Come on out. The American idea of racial progress is measured by how fast I become white. We really, really like you. Especially you have that classic black female body, curvy, thick, it's awesome. Um, but the hair, it's a lot. Um, if we chose you to be our Negro, would you consider straightening it? about it? No. What? Ooh, so angry. Excuse me? Next. Buenos dias y gracias por la oportunidad. Do you have a James Baldwin quote? <laughs> eh. No. 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 Yeah. No? Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Yeah, no gracias. <laughs> bye, thank you. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> Next. Um, 
No. Our dreams have been shook. Our dreams have been shook. Our days have been made. Our days have been made. Our days have been made. I know how to love. I know how to love. I know how to love. I might get paid. I might get paid. I might get paid. Our dreams have been shook. Our dreams have been shook. Our days have been made. Our days have been made. We know what's been told. We know what's been told. We know what's been told. We're leading today. We're leading today. We know what's been told. My sable sister. My sable sister. She's 
resistance, dismantling your oppressive system, strategically and subversively. You
City Live. So they can play a game of seek and find. See, within my block, some labeled the state of calm. Conflict to conspire to connect these minds. So therefore, they take minds. That's their daily grind. Greed. Said, I need what they feed. But they ain't asked me no questions. They just gave and said, proceed. Gentrified in my hood. Didn't even ask for permission. They asked for forgiveness after the dirt was issued. Talking about, we just here to reach out to some colored people. So I'm like, y'all reach me toilet tissue. Just since it's just fine. He keeps talking about do it for the community. He keeps talking about do it for the community. My community sits on porches, laughs with each other, raises our kids. Tell me how! Tell me how, 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 how. How does Starbucks help create the community? My community brews our own tea and sips it together at the table. I don't want you to grow, no. I don't want you to grow, no. I don't want it, 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 don't want grow. Mmm, tell that man to go, go on from around here. Mmm, tell that man to go, go on from around here.
for the future. Breathe for the ancestors. Breathe for the ones we lost. Breathe for the ones we found. Breathe for our joy. Breathe for our parents. Breathe for our love. Breathe and never stop breathing. Breathe and never stop breathing. Breathe and keep on breathing. Breathe for the love. Breathe for the family. Breathe. Breathe.
to the dirty South. North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Florida, and Louisiana.
So we need you as supporters and as friends to make this continue to happen so that we can have the community that you see here as a part of this. So please join us as supporters. We thank you, we thank you. Yeah. Apply next year, yeah. 2018, yeah. Summer Leadership Institute. We need some lights. Susan, we need some lights. We gotta take a class.